Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason, where we're going to learn something new in 90 minutes. Today on the show, we have Dr. Gleb Bamatov. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Jason. It's good to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to have you on the show. I remember we met for the first time way back at uh, a testing conference. Um, a CERT JS, yes. That's right, a CERT JS. It was a, a really good time. And um, I've been following Cypress ever since. And I have been just like really blown away by how much more approachable it feels to write tests using something like Cypress. You know, I, I came from... IBM where it was a lot of, you know, you, you wrote like big, you know, Mocha assertion libraries and everything was kind of hidden in Jenkins and, and it just didn't feel like you didn't know what was going on. Right. And, and, and using Cypress always kind of feels like a breath of fresh air. Um, but thank you. Yeah. So let's, let's, before we talk about Cypress, actually, I'd love to, I'd love to talk about you. So um, for those of us who are not familiar with your work, do you mind giving us a background? Uh, my background is right here, so. <laughs> <laughs> I will not give you a background. Finding that virtual background image in high enough resolution was a hassle. <laughs> That's I mean, a challenge, It was like yeah. show from the 80s, right? <laughs> so everything is low res. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Jason, it was uh, a pleasure to actually watch your talk at the SERGS two years ago. I think it was a wonderful talk. I came to software quality probably in graduate school. And okay. it wasn't like my you know, choice or anything, but I've done like network uh, layers. I've done Java virtual machines. I've done computer graphics. That's my So Lit Mobile just sent me this. Sorry, that was my fault. But at every step, right, in school, in my career, I always loved software that works, right? Mm -hmm. Software that I could understand, come back later, modify something. And so at every step I had like, wait, this doesn't have any tests. Let me write tests. Well, how do I test this, right? How do I refactor it so it's testable? And so progressively after a career in computer vision, I actually joined a company. You might have heard it, it's a small company called MathWorks, where I actually wasn't in computer vision department, but I was working on porting MATLAB to the web to run it inside of a web browser. Okay. And at that point, I was like, well, this web thing is actually can do everything, right? Yeah. Like one of the things about what I love about Cypress is that it, everything is in JavaScript world, right? And I program C, C++, Java, C Sharp, every, every language probably. But having a single language, full stack, and all the tools implement the same language gives me tremendous power. Yeah. I could literally fix everything. Right? You don't like something in Cypress? Go ahead, change it. Maybe write a plugin. Maybe change your task. It's all the same language. So the knowledge, the tools. And so after a while, I joined other startups. And then I started using Cypress in beta program like four years ago. And I had the same feeling that you probably have right now. It's like, it's approachable. It makes writing a task a joy. And so after a while, we were talking with Brian Mann, who founded Cypress. And we talked about like ideas and what we could do. And finally, I, I joined Cypress, right? And I've been three years at the company, could not be happier. It's absolutely incredible experience writing open source tools for other developers. Yeah. Right? Not, it's just great feeling. I, I was incredibly lucky. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, chat, how's the quality? I'm getting weird notices over here. Um, and I'm worried that it is dropping too many frames. And so I want to double check that I'm, that I don't need to like kick my router real quick. Can chat even hear us? Did we, did we get lost? Give me just a second. I'm going to unplug and replug the ethernet cable. I've got it on a dual connection, but I think my ethernet gave out. So one sec. Absolutely. Okay.
Okay. Hopefully that. Hopefully that should that should fix it. It uh, it's now showing the Ethernet, which it wasn't showing before. So I think. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. Um, it, it chat. Please keep me informed if that starts to lag again. Just let me know. Um, and yeah, we should we should be in good shape now. Also, you may have noticed the uh, the the buffer is back. I'm in my little my little felt box mm -hmm. uh, because I got a bunch of crap about my audio sounding like phasey because I'm in a big open wooden hard floor room. So, <laughs> so I'm back in my box. Um, okay, so for uh, for those of us um, who are new to testing, right? So so I talked a little bit about how amazing Cypress has felt to use in comparison to other testing tools. Um, but for a lot of us, I think we we look at testing as something that we have to do, not something that we want to right. do. It kind of it feels like being told to eat your vegetables. And I I wanted to talk about like how do you get past that? Like what are what are you seeing in teams or or how are you helping encourage teams to um to move past that feeling of like, oh, testing is a thing we have to do before we can ship and starting to see it as like such a power up in their workflow. I think people change their attitude towards testing when they see it not as time sync and instead as a tool for productivity and mm -hmm. a tool for advancement and a tool for to deliver the features faster and advance their career. So just to give you an example, many people think I'll do work on a feature and then I'll allocate one day for testing at the end. Mm -hmm. right? And what usually happens? Well, it falls off. And so you either <laughs> rush it or you never do any testing, and then what do you have? You have a feature that you're not sure works, right? Mm -hmm. Or the, right, or works incorrectly, or the tests are incredibly brittle because you're rushed and you're trying to you know, just write them at the end. And to me, when you understand that writing the test and writing a feature has to go hand in hand, right? So once you reach like a, a little, core a, a little nucleus of functionality there is a test and now you're safe and now you build the second step but you'll never break the first one and when you update the test i don't say i don't say always do test driven development i just say split the big feature into smaller chunks and keep testing it in parallel mm -hmm. and another benefit in this is that when you say or oh, my test is brittle hard to understand that means your code or your application is hard to test its architecture in a way that's hard to understand and hard to reach into. And that means that you should be updating and refactoring your source code to make it more testable. And the long-term payoff of this is that when you have to come back half a year, one month later, you will actually be able to add another feature or fix a bug. You know, because all the support that, actually that's, is an investment. I feel like that's the thing that has been the biggest um, like the the part that really seemed to make it click for me is when I had a project and I wrote testable code uh, and I had my tests in place when I walked away and I came back, you know, months later, and this is just me, this wasn't on a team. I came back and I was like, what does this code do? And then I ran the test, right? And then when I made changes, I was confident that I wasn't accidentally breaking something in a file that I hadn't thought about in nine months. I, exactly. you know, because my tests all passed. And I think that's where I really started to understand like, holy crap, I should be doing this all the time, whether it's just me, yes. whether it's a whole team, you know, and, and like I'm the, I am 100 percent guilty of not testing all the time. Uh, you know, if you look at learn with Jason dev, it is not tested at all. <laughs> um, but fine. but it, what I'm noticing is that like it when I do it, I'm always faster on those projects. Absolutely. It, it's absolute. It might slow you down at first, like the first day, mm -hmm. right? If you have to bring in tools, maybe learn something new to start testing right away. But it definitely speeds you up 10 times. And the more you go with like with passing time, the more boost it gives you day by day, right? And mm -hmm. especially, forget about your, your own code, right? Would you want to take over someone's code that doesn't have any tests, right? We all say Greenfield Project, right? I can take over a project and it would be a brownfield of abandoned code, mm -hmm. unknown quality, unknown features, unknown minefields, 
or I can take over a lush garden with features, tests, right? And I know that if I refactor something, it will keep growing and blooming, right? So yeah, I I'm sorry for all this uh, vegetable analogies, but <laughs> yeah, look, any whenever we can talk about food in any sense here, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for the thank you for the sub, Pilo. I saw also I think uh Robert subscribed before we even started, which is which is great. Uh Roberto, yeah, thank you. Um so now let's see. Yeah, married with children. Your your background has been recognized. <laughs> uh busted. Busted. Um yeah, okay. So uh let's let's go ahead and let's dive in and build something, right? So I think what would be fun to do today uh, and something that we like to do on the show is to just start with an empty folder and see what we can do. So let me switch over into pair programming mode. And um, so we're going to be using this is the Cypress website. So let me throw that over here. Um, and so let's uh, let's yeah, let's let's dig in. If you if you wanted to start a new project, where would you start? Let me pull up iTerm um, and let me make sure I've got a clean window here. Uh, Jason, how do you usually start? Do you start with a repo? I usually start with empty folder, empty GitHub repository. Yeah, that's so that I can git commit all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. So let's uh, let's do like Cypress testing, and then we'll move into that. And I'm gonna get in it. Um, I'll get create. We'll just make the repo on on GitHub right now. Ooh. Um, is, is that like a GitHub CLI that you it's, use? Well, this is the hub CLI tools. Okay, I need to switch yeah. over to GitHub CLI. I just haven't done it yet. Um, and then now that I've got that, I can let's um, just open this. Uh, do you want npm in it? Or? Oh, yeah, I can oh, do what, that. It's not a bad what's idea. What's the teach command? It's an alias for uh, VS Code that uses a different profile that like strips away some of the tooltips and some of the extra UI so that it's a more simplified, bigger font, you know, that kind of stuff. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, so let's npm init. Uh, and then I think that's all we're going to need for now. I guess I can make sure that we don't track any Git modules. And then from here, we are, we're set. We've got ourselves an empty folder. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe what we want to do to start is we can just have a, um, like a site folder, or we can call this, we'll call it like public. Right, right. So it's oh. like a static site. Yeah. I meant to call this file index.html, and we'll give ourselves a folder called public. All right. And inside uh, here, I can like make a basic. Did you hear, Jason, that in VS Code, when you create a file, if you do like public slash index.html, it creates a folder and then puts. Yeah, I, it's I think a, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it, so you can just do like a folder, folder to name.js, yes. and it'll just create all those folders for you, which is absolutely magical. Um, I. <laughs> Uh, my problem is that sometimes I try to click buttons and I never, I can never tell the difference between these two buttons. So I click the yes. wrong one. Yes. Uh, um, okay. So we're going to do Cypress testing on Jamstack sites. And okay. So if you were going to start, like I I've heard a lot of times you should write the test before you write the, the code. I, is Cypress the kind of, like, is what we're doing today something that you would consider to be like test driven development or how would you go about doing this? Uh, you can do both. Okay. Why don't we start test driven development? Why don't, okay. why don't we write an end to end test first, right? Cool. So I have, so I I have nothing. In that case, you have to install Cypress, right? Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to npm install uh, Cypress. But as a dev dependency, right? I'm sorry? As a dev dependency. As a dev dependency. Yeah. Okay, so dash d. Um, do I need anything else? No, not right now, I think. Perfect. And you will get the latest version of Cypress 4.6.0 that just came out yesterday, so. Excellent. Um, and so this is something that I've always kind of, uh, so we're we're downloading the, the Cypress node module, and then it also right. pulls down a version of Cypress 
And this gets stored locally, is that right? Yes, it's stored in your user profile folder. So you only download 460 once and it's shared between all your projects that use that version of Cypress. And that, so, that's, that's to make it faster, right? So that we don't have to do that full download on every project. Exactly. You saw how long it took, right? Mm -hmm. So you really want to cache all the tools mm -hmm. locally or on CI. So that's important. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got Cypress. Uh, if we look in right. here, we can see here's Cypress. Um, and now we actually, we don't need to, we can make this into a thing. So what I just run, like. You, you would do Cypress run. Cypress run. Right. Okay. Cypress run. Right. So now let's make this work. Right. But before we do that, right? Okay. We Cypress needs a spec file. It needs to know like what are you testing, right? I suggest that you run NPX Cypress open, which is interactive mode where okay. you will see Cypress running locally. So Cypress run will be for CI. Cypress okay. open is the first time that you want to run this. That's what you would use. Okay. Um, so chat, have any of you used Cypress before? And actually, here's a better question. Uh, let us know if you have done testing at all, right? Like what, what are you doing yeah, for testing fine, yeah. and what have you, uh, what have you used? What, what tools are you using? Um, okay. So here is, we've got just examples. It, examples. The first time you run it, it, it scaffolds like showing you like, here's what you can do. The most important thing, Jason, I think, you see that Chrome button on the top right corner of Cypress? Uh huh. That's where you can select the browser. So Cypress comes in with oh. built in Electron and it looked around and, like, oh, you have Firefox, you have Chrome already installed locally. So I can run those. So you can you know, pick whatever browser you want. Very cool. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um, and we're seeing, yeah, the chat, this, this for a lot of folks in the chat today, this is, uh, this is their first time writing tests. Uh, a handful of people have tried Cypress. Um, a lot of Jest. Nice. Yeah, Jest is good. Yes. Um, yeah, 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 good stuff. Okay, Perfect. so. Um, we can definitely like, even delete the folder so it doesn't accidentally run because we want to run, like, right a test for our own page, right? So it's inside Cypress integration. Okay. And it's called example. Okay. So I'll just delete so this just folder. Delete folder. Yes. Delete examples. And okay. instead you probably under integration, you want to just uh, start a new file. Okay. And it call it task spec, whatever is your preferred. Is it, is it, Dash spec or dot spec? It, it doesn't really matter because by default, Cypress will consider every file in integration folder a oh, test file. So okay. you can name it and you can limit it, but by sure. default, every file is a spec. That makes sense. And now okay. um, it now automatically picked that up too, which is really cool. Yes, right. And if you run it, like right now, I believe it will say could not find any specs in, in the, like any tests in that file. God, but this you is can so see cool. the UI, right? It's, it's already like shows you, hey, this will be probably something on the right and command log on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really, really cool because like what I and what I love about this and we'll see more as we go, but like check out like here on the left, this is like a Cypress window. Yes. And and um, and this is like eventually will be our website. So like now it's not testing where we have to just trust that the computers are doing what we expected them to do. We get to watch it happen. Let's watch it happen, Jason. Let's right? watch it let's, happen. Let's let's write a test. All right, we're gonna write our first test. So I um, it, well actually before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what these folders mean because I think we've got four folders that, that came in with Cypress here, um, right. and we've got a Cypress JSON. So our Cypress JSON right now is is just empty. That's just if empty. we want to modify things. Yes, that's where you can set like global settings, like okay. maybe the base URL where your site lives. Maybe you want to change the timeouts. Maybe you want to add, like mask spec files, right? Got it. Right now we don't need to, to touch it. Okay. Um, so then we have um, probably the like we can talk about. So this index file, it looks like it doesn't do anything by default. This um, right. uses some. This is some cool stuff. I didn't realize this, but in VS Code and presumably other uh, IDEs, if you do the triple slash and then like reference types, you get 
TypeScript support in, or like TypeScript types, like the autocomplete. Um, so if we go down here and we type like config dot, it gives us all the types. Right. Which, exactly. Crap, so that's this, cool. By the way, this config, you can modify it. It usually comes with a Cypress JSON file, but this is where you can programmatically modify the configuration before you actually load Cypress. So uh, the plugins file allows you to change the behavior of Cypress in many ways, right? Like change the config, register event handlers. Um, so it's it's a file that you don't have to touch by default until you probably use Cypress for a month, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay. So so then we know we don't need to worry about that one. So we'll just, we'll, won't change it, close it out of there. Not that one, the, right. this one, plugins. And then so, in support, we import So Cypress commands. allows you, like it, it has a big API of commands, like visit, click, type, uh, assertions, everything is bundled in. You don't have to install anything to start. But let's say you want to add your own commands or you want to bring third party commands like oh, testing so library. Oh, to add code. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> That's <a> beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so you can install additional packages, additional plugins for Cypress, and then load them inside the support file. Literally, what will happen is that that file will be loaded before each spec. I almost think like this file will be concatenated to run before your spec file. So you can load okay. additional things. Got it. Okay, cool. So um, sorry, I'm, I'm reloading this page because I want... It looks like our our bot all our bot stopped cooperating. So let's see if it's going to cooperate now. <clears throat> there we go. It's back. <laughs> now we should be able to play the game too. There it is. Nice. Look at it. Look at the bird. Look at it. <laughs> um, so uh, the, this, by the way, this little uh, flappy thing is a a gift from Cassidy Williams. Uh, <laughs> it is completely ridiculous. Wait, did it quit on us already? Oh. Okay, I got to figure out what's going on with that. I think it. I think I bugged it. Whatever. Okay, so let's let's focus up. Um, so we are going to. Uh, we've got our our commands, but we're not going to use those today. I don't think. No. Um, and the last folder is uh, the fixtures, right? Yep. That's where you can throw all your test fixtures that you want to load and use during the tests. We have a special command for loading fixtures. You can, for example, then use them to stop network requests. Okay. Right? Just by saying load the fixture and use it as a network response, so you don't have to run the server, for example. Got it. Okay, perfect. Um, and so we might need that today, but let's start by just we're going to write this test. So we've got our test spec, and it's a it's an empty folder. Right. Um, so if we want to start, what uh, what's our first step? So we use Mocha test runner but under the hood. So okay. all the syntax for tests would start with a function called it. And then you give an argument, uh, so it, and then uh, the name of a test. So okay. like it loads or something. We're describing the page in this case. Yeah. And so let's see. Loads the home page, and then we pass it a uh, function, a right? Callback. Yes. Yeah. And that's where all Cypress commands will go, and all commands in Cypress are chained over the global Cy variable, like lowercase C Y Cy. So if you write C Y. Let's say visit. So if you want to visit the URL, and you can say index.html, because we only have index.html, right, that we created. Uh, you don't have to do the slash. It will read it from the root, I believe, yes. Oh, so I get it, OK. We, If you hover over site, right, or visit, there is no information. Right. All right. So can you copy with the reference line comment from the plugins file that you showed before? Yes. So the whole line, if you copy, this is the best thing about VS Code and modern text editors. By using that line, you tell them, hey, load the TypeScript types for Cypress in your node modules. Whoops. Right. That was not what I wanted to do. Yeah, um, I think just hovering should be now because. I, I think I turned that off in this teach mode. But um, but so now we can see here like yes. all of these these types. So when we when we do that. Right. So every command comes with a little snippet, every assertion, you, and, and a link to actual full documentation page. Yeah, that's amazing. This is really, really nice. 
so you can kind of see how we supposed to use I guess something mm -hmm. yeah that's that's really really nice okay so um so now we're we're visiting the home page but like this isn't really a test but i think well, we can run it right well you already are running so wait 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 you already oh. have chrome open right I the second so. window you just have to find it okay okay yeah. so failed trying okay. to load our index okay one second let's look at the error message now Here's one thing that I want to show you. Um, see how it shows you where it failed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you click on the blue link uh, right above it here and say v Visual Studio Code and say, yep. Oh, it opened my other my other uh, non T non <sighs> okay, one. Okay. This is me with my special profile. So for you, this will just open the right way. Um, yes, but you but, see how it like it, it knew where you know the failing command was. We, oh, that's we so now cool. process all the source maps, you go right there. So that is really is nice. Okay, so that's I mean that's amazing. So we just uh we just do that. Okay, so then if I want to fix this, because it looks right. like so, it did yes, look yes. in the right place. Is it looking at the right place? I think so. Let me look. Is it? Is it? Let's find out. It's not because I put it in public. Exactly. So okay. I think the error messages should give you plenty of information, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the frustrating parts of testing is that you get an error stack sometimes and you have no idea where the error failed. What was like, what it was trying to do and how do you fix it? So we were working really hard right now on error improvements. Mm -hmm. We always had good errors, but now we're like, here's what you did. This is where it went wrong. Here's how it fix how to fix this. So in this case, hopefully, uh, it's easier to figure out. Yeah, yeah. What a I mean, what a powerful like, and that's just a such a like a level up too to have that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So now that we're visiting, um, how do I tell it where to look for my my site? Well, it's uh, you, you you visiting index.html. Why don't you say public slash index.html, right? So just give it. Yeah. And if you save it and hey, hey, look at that go. It's watching your files for you, right? So okay. second monitor, Cypress keeps you running with us. You work with your source code, specs, and just watch it pass or not. Yeah, this will be a little uh this will be kinda squishy, but we can we can make it work. Yeah. Um actually maybe I can make this even a little bit smaller. All right. So now you can actually work on the index.html, right? Um, okay, so let's open index.html. And let's add a thing. We'll say, like, this page is tested by Cypress. All right. Okay. So then I've saved it. Now, is this going to hot reload or anything, or do I need to? No, because it's not reloading on your source files. It only auto reloads on your test files. Got it. You know, there are plugins that will auto reload by watching the folder, but sure. by stock, by default, it just watches. So if you now, if you update the specs to, let's like, say, um, a, a great command that will check if a text is there is contains. Right? Okay. Contains. Yes. So here's contains. And you can give part of a text that you appear, like you hope appears. Yeah, look at that. Okay, yeah. but also check this out. Now our tests are passing. We we now yeah. know that we are loading the right page. Right, um, and, and notice when you hover on contains, right, in a command log right here, it ooh. shows you which element it found. So you know you're not finding a wrong element accidentally. Right, it's... That's super cool. So we can yeah. see, yeah, oh, yeah, that's nice. Um, and, and, this is, and this is where I think it starts to be cool. It's like, we had a, like, very minor hurdles to clear here before we were able to immediately start seeing this work, um, right. which I feel like was not the case when I was trying to set up Jenkins end to end testing. And that's like not to Jenkins is powerful. It's a, there's a reason that it's like the enterprise CI, right? But it's like, right. it is not fast. <laughs> like the setup on Jenkins is not quick. <laughs> I, I have to say that I, so I switched jobs maybe like, let's say six times in my career. And every time you arrive to a new job, right, 
you have to, I don't want to say prove yourself, but maybe set yourself on the right path. And I was looking back at my career, like, what did I do to like set myself right? And at one company, I installed Sentry, right? I brought crash reporting analytics, mm-hmm. but I didn't have it. And immediately we found thousands of errors and we started fixing them, of course. But my stock professionally just went up because all of a sudden like this new thing became available. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking lately that if you're starting a new job, you, you should do two things. First, work hard, mm-hmm. right? Just because you have so much to learn. If you work hard, at least initially for a couple of weeks, you will have great reputation. But second, because everyone or like many people don't like testing. If you come in and you write good end-to-end tests, right? You take care of such a big problem that nobody wants to touch. And all of a sudden, you'll be something who solved this huge thing. So I, I strongly believe that if you're an engineer working in JavaScript, working with web applications, writing a few end-to-end tests and, and creating a whole like CI pipeline, so mm-hmm. it's like used by everyone on every commit, will give you so many cookie points, it's not even funny. I, so, I, I want that on a t-shirt. I, I want work <laughs> hard and write tests on a t-shirt. <laughs> yes, that's a good t-shirt. Um, okay, so this is this is great. So now we have, uh, I've got my my spec file and my, my index.html. Yeah. And so I want to do, let's, let's say we want to add another page. Right, so I want to, um, let's see, read more uh, on the, let's create an about page. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all we're doing is making a static site generator here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me make this wrap. If I can remember how to do that, there it is. Um, so now we, when we save, if I go in here, we now have, this is really tiny text, but it just says you can read more on the about page. So that means I need to create an about page. Um, and so I can just, let's go here. I'll save this as public about.html. Okay. Right. And then we'll do the same thing here. Actually, let me just copy this one over. And we'll just say about. And we can say, actually, let's keep. Mm-hmm. We can do like go back to the home page. Yeah, okay. So now if we go mm-hmm. to, to look at this, we can actually, and, and this is the other thing, this is a browser, right? Like this is just a normal browser. Yeah, open DevTools, right? Like, you know, do whatever you normally do. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so we can go in here, we can inspect, we can we can play around, we can, right. you know, we can mess with the styles. Uh, one other thing, if you switch to console here in DevTools and then click on any command in Cypress command log on the left, like contains, it Ooh. actually brings additional information, like object references, like big tables, everything will be printed there. That's so you'll really see all cool. The details. Yeah, and it, it, so it, it shows us what we found, how many we found. That's powerful. That's really powerful. Um, question in the chat about other browsers. We have a drop down for that. So check this out. Um, I can go over here and I can say, I can stop and I can say, let's run Firefox or let's run Electron. Um, so let's run, let's run Firefox and see what happens. Right, so we support any Chrome-based browser plus Firefox. So even like the new Microsoft Edge works perfectly, right? It's out of the box. Whatever you have pre-installed, it's there. Um, by default, Cypress comes bundled with Electron. It it's used really to be nice. a big problem because it was behind in our installation, but now it's pretty much up to date with stable Chrome. So mm-hmm. I. I consider those two equivalent right now. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is really nice. Um, can Cypress test the app in several browsers at the same time? 
if if you're running Cypress in several containers. Okay. Right? Uh, if you think about like even like the headless mode is probably fine. You can run Cypress headlessly, you know, in parallel. But driving browser at full speed with extra overhead, the Cypress does right because it drops every command, everything. Probably will tax your machine. And at some point, you will see like, oh, I slow down. Uh, I like, I like CPU intensive process will will just mm -hmm. crawl. So, but if you run it like on CI, spin multiple containers, no problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this would be something where like you and and like when we run Cypress Run, can we tell it to use multiple browsers? Yes, you can say Cypress Run dash dash browser Firefox, and Got it. it will spin Firefox. Or yeah. you dash dash browser Chrome dash dash headless. Mm -hmm. So you can say what what you want to do. Very cool. Uh, by the way, wh why don't we uh, like expand this test, right? And after we check the about page, then we can show like Cypress run locally because you will see some a, a nice surprise there. Yeah, let's do it. So let's. Um, I've got my test spec here, um, and so I want to let's see. Links to, let's see if I can do this from my own memory. Links to the about uh, page. Jason, can, can I say something about this, right? Of so course. When you write unit tests, it's nice when every test is short, right? Yes. Uh, arrange, act, assort kind of situation. Okay. So that you only like check one thing. Because when you run a unit test and it fails, usually it's in, in a terminal. And so from the failure itself, you know which part is broken because there's one assertion. You only work on one thing. Mm -hmm. With Cypress, I don't think it's the best strategy. I think your test should be kind of like user story. Oh. So you can actually add more commands into end-to-end -end test. Because, and you will see in a second why you will not have problem understanding if something fails, even in a longer end-to-end -end test. Okay. So, so here I would say test the whole site. Because right now it's quite small. So why write multiple tests? Okay, so then I want to sigh. Let's see what I can do. There's a here's a click. So what does click do? Um, so I want to. Oh, you don't have you don't have IntelliSense on Hover. <laughs> I know. I think it's I think it's because I'm um, in this other. Let's see. If I go here. You're not gonna show me my stuff. But here, this is what I want to see. Oh, and it's down at the bottom now. Yeah. Oh, that's really frustrating. Um, maybe if I make this bigger, it'll work again. There we go. This is what I want. So uh -huh, right. I need to side dot get my button, and then I can click it. Right. Okay. So that's fine. I can do that. So let's side dot get, and I'm gonna get my anchor. We've only got one of those on the. Right. But I'm already seeing something that I would want to control here is like I would need to I would need to know how to get this right. So I would have like a class of right. like about link. And Ma so many then, people use like data attributes, right? For specifically for testing, like data oh, testing. Oh, that's right? because cool, classes yeah. can a change for styling. So we suggest uh, using uh, attributes, but it's up to you. So so okay, so you would do like data testing. Yes. Okay. And then right, actually, here. Can yeah, you just ahead. say data test for now, right? Let's let's data test. And like no other make no other things. Uh save your test spec so that we actually see the updated page. Okay. Let me yeah, just just uh, just save it so we see the failure. It, that doesn't really matter right now, but I want to show you something else that you might appreciate. So right now this is failing, right? Because we don't have mm -hmm. about link class. So it shows you a failure. But if you go to the browser and you see this little target next to the URL, uh, scroll a little bit higher, uh, in, in the iframe, right now the page kind of scrolled. Uh, Am I? Yeah. yeah this, uh, can you rerun the test? Because that stupid header took. Oh, we don't see the top. Uh, can you like a uh, command R, you know, like to. Uh, um, on this page. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, here it is, right? So um, right it was now when my, it fails. My window is so small. Yeah, yeah this one. Okay. Uh, the tar you have a target uh, button. Yes, click on it. And now kind of hover over the link. 
Oh, look at that. Uh, that and that's and so pre-built. Yes. So copy it and then just paste in your file. So we have this little selector playground that allows you to pick based on the like, preference. Right. Look at that. And now we can see it's already it's already doing what we expected. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So that's that's really slick. So we've and, got and we, that. And then right, we just do and, the same thing, right? Like um sci get h1 dot contains um about. you can combine and say contains h1 and then text so it will like contains can take two arguments like selector and text by default it thinks it's just text like this yes that's it nice that's even that's even easier um that makes me want to refactor this one too okay so that's all that's all doing what i want yes all right. Now you have a full text, uh, I mean, test, right? And I, I, I want you to show the Cypress run if you don't mind, right? Like, yeah, so let's, let's do it. change like uh, contains on line nine to something that's wrong, right? Or change, like, make it fail pretty much. Okay. So here. So it's notice wrong. how it, like, yeah, it, it tries to find maybe your text hasn't updated yet. Okay. So, so that's, right. that's wrong now. So now I want to quit this. Yes, quit it. And then just run my test? Uh, and then do like, yes, npm test. Because that runs Cypress run. Mm -hmm. So instead of Cypress open, but with this graphical UI, this runs headlessly by default. So this is what you do on your CI. So it found that spec is running right now. Do, do, do. Says the same error, but now if you scroll up, you'll see additional things, right? Like yeah. after the error, and, and the error is pretty much the same. It says could not. Uh, so here's out. the the name of the test we wrote. We know that yes. one is failing. Timed out retrying. Expected to find the content wrong within the selector H1, and it never did. Okay, that's yep, that's right. very clear. Yes. And then we can see here Results. we all got one test. Yep. Took us four seconds. Ooh, oh, what's this? Oh, look at screenshot. Ah. Okay, so inside of our Cypress screenshots, and then the name of a spec file and the test, so we can even like yeah look. All right, let's go look at this. Screenshots. Holy crap! Yep, that's it. That's, that's why beautiful. Right, longer test, even if you fail somewhere in middle, mm -hmm. you will see exactly why. So where is you don't have to split the test artificially just to keep them short. Yeah, that's uh, that's really cool. Uh, Brad, you asked us to do something again, and I, I'm not sure what you were asking us to do again. So if you want to call out what you were looking for, we can we can do it again. Um, and Cell92, we are about to show, I think, how to get into some async yes. functions, right? right? Right. Before we do that, okay, Jason, look at, under the screenshots in your terminal, you have one more link that you will like, right? Whoa. OK. Yes. Videos. I would like to open this in the browser, I, I prob think. Let's... Yeah, probably in the terminal. Or... Um, let me just open up a finder window, I think. Yeah. Get one of these. We'll go to no, learn with JSON, Cypress testing, Cypress videos. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. So every platform by default, you don't have to install anything else. It will generate you a video by default. Dang. So think CI, test failed, and your debugging flow. Just look at the video. Find mm -hmm. previously passing test run and look at the video and just side by side, like where did they diverge? Where did they go wrong? Got it. it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we got asked to do the the selector playground. So let's run npx cypress open again. Yep. Um, and so when we run this spec, we end up out here, and then anywhere that we are, let's see. Let me just reload. This. It, 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 I, again, uh, I think it's because my window is really tiny. Uh, can you close that? But Chrome is running it. It's I think it's that one. And now if you reload the page, it, oh, that's so weird that it does that. Yeah, it, it might be something we're doing nowadays that's incompatible. Um, 
Okay, let's let's do this. Um, I'm gonna just tell the spec to stop doing this part. There. Now it's just, oh, and then okay. now we've got this. Uh, this so I think it's the navigation for whatever reason is is making that disappear. But then we've Probably. got this target button, and then if we click right. on anything, it shows us what we would actually do. That's cool. So. Click. So we have best practices for selecting elements, and we implemented them in this selector, right? Use test ID if you have it. If not, use unique class. If not, use that, and so on. Mm -hmm. And you can modify it by writing a plugin and loading it in Cypress plugins index file. So you can adjust uh, the specific preference or priority of each attribute yourself. Yeah, yeah, really, really handy stuff. That is. Uh... That's pretty powerful. Um, oh, you know what? I wonder if it is because we're we're navigating to um, files oh, see, and not a server. Do you think that's what's causing it to, to it, do the thing? It, it it might be we just got a report of it in four six zero, so we haven't looked at this. Okay, cool. Literally something that I write like every this morning. Or... Well, cool. So yeah, this is uh, this is like this is working. It's doing what we want. Um, it. It checks for this, but if we fix this test, it reruns, and now we get the, the test that we want. And if we run it in CI, we'll get so, our successful tests, I hope. Right. And people ask, like, how long does it take? Or well, how long does it wait by default? It's by default four seconds, but you can adjust it per command or globally. And why is it four seconds? Because Three seconds is too short and five seconds way too long. So obviously it has to be four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so um, so now we've got we've got basic tests here, right? So we've we've set yes. up a site. That site is is being tested. Um, we start out on the home page, we make sure that the home page is showing the data we expect. Uh, then we go to the about page and we make sure that that data is, show, is or that that page is showing what we expect. Um, right. So I think the next thing that I'd love to see is what do we do when we have uh, JavaScript, right? We want to we right. want to load in some JavaScript. So maybe what I will do is I'm going to go to our index page and I'm just going to write a really simple. Um, let's just create like a div ID uh, and we will call this or we'll give it a class. Um, JavaScript loaded data. And we'll make that empty by default. And then down here, we're going to add some script. And let's do a call to um, what's an open API? Let's go to the Rick and Morty API. So here is an API that I know works. And we're just going to use the, the rest version so that we can go nice and fast. And let's get um, any character. And I believe if we just make a call to like any character, we'll get all of them. So let's do this. Um, oh, so you want to lower the character and like put an image some? Like, we could, image. I mean, we could do something that, um, actually, maybe I can just get a single character. Let's do that. Let's get, uh, let's get one character. So I'm going to fetch this character. Uh, we'll use, I don't even think we need any headers or anything. I think we can just do that. And then we will get the response as JSON. Um, and if something goes wrong, we'll just log that. OK. Um, so what I can do then, I guess in here, we'll just use the, the promise-based API. Mm -hmm. And inside, we'll say um, document.querySelector uh, JavaScript. I mean, this is a bad. That's a bad, bad class name. Needs something that's easier to type. You're coding then... live, Jason. You're doing great. <laughs> uh, so for now, I think what we can do is um, let's do it like this. Let's make this a pre-tag so that we can format it. And we'll say inner text equals JSON stringify response. Mm -hmm. um, and let me make this all a little bit wider so that we can see what's happening. All right, so what, what we're doing is we're hitting the Rick and Morty API. We, we know we're getting JSON back, so we're, we're making sure that we parse that. 
and then we're setting the inside of the loaded data to be a let's format it too. So we'll do um, null two so that it, it actually like formats like an object that we can read a little better. And if I go back to Cypress, let's npm or no, npx Cypress open. What we should see is um, pretty much immediately. I'll run. It's going to take us over to the about page. And here's our character, right? So that all loaded and gave us what we wanted. Um, and like that request is going to take time. So it does, it's not immediately available. And it could, like on a slow day, that might take a full right. second to load or something. And, and um, this is what causes that flake, right? On mm -hmm. CI. Yeah. It locally passes, but takes a couple seconds on CI once in a while and fails with us. Yeah. So let's do uh let's do this. Let's just we'll make a couple little things. Um so we'll create like the name will be a document create element uh h2 and um we can set the inner text to be uh, response dot name and then we'll set the uh, the image will be document dot create element image um, and then we'll set the image dot source to be response dot image mm -hmm. and we'll set an image dot alt to be response dot name. Um, and then I need to add both of these. So we'll do uh, document dot, I should probably just get this. We'll get the container will be this one here. And then we'll container dot append child name and container dot append child image. And I believe that will give us what we actually want. So if I save this and we'll just save that again to see if I can write code on the first try. Nope. <laughs> Append child parameter one is not of type node. What? Yes, it is. Uh, you can open DevTools to see. Yeah, exactly. Not of type node. This is, oh, maybe it's because I did this. Oh, what's what are you doing, container? computer? Why? Why are you like this? I think it might have been that. Let's uh, let's try this again. So I'm going to, there it is. Um, so now we're, we're actually loading some data. Um, and then let's, let's imagine that like this would be a. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, so let's imagine that like this is this is like a page where we would be loading um, a random character, you know, so maybe maybe we're getting like, you know, one of three and I don't always know which one we're going to get. Um, mm -hmm. If you were going to do that, how would you how would we do like a generic test? So I'm not because like thinking about I, I'm thinking about like testing the, the contains of the, the H1. If I'm right. on a site. So sorry, go ahead. I was thinking we could do a lot of things, right? I think in this case, let's just see if element exists, right? After we click on the div okay. and see if uh, this new element with, uh, like this is an image, right? Or H1, I forgot what it was. What, what it's it's going to be an H2 with the name and an image tag. Yeah. Let's just say first we have to click and then we'll see if there is We'll try to say get again and see red element. Oh yeah, we were gonna do this on click, weren't we? So let's let's do that. Let's um, load character, and we will set it up like that. Then let's add a mm -hmm. button, um, and we'll say yep. yep. Load a Rick or let's see, load Morty. Um, and when we come down here, then we can say document query selector button. 
and we'll add an event listener for click, and then we'll just fire off load character. Yes. Okay, so now if I run this, let's leave that out for now. And when I click, we get our Morty. Okay, exactly. So, so, so now we've got. has to interact with a page just like a human. Right? Exactly. That's. Okay, perfect. So that's let me let me see how much I've learned about Cypress here. So I'm going to sci get button click. Then I want to sci. Is there like a sci exists or would I still do like a get? You would do get. Okay, so sci dot get, get yeah. H two. And then I'm just making sure that it, is that it? Like that's enough to see if it exists? Well, it's almost, right? Um, so in this case, we have just commands, right? We did site visit, site contains, get, click. We literally like drop the page. All those commands, like site contains, they have built-in assertions, right? So site mm -hmm. visit will fail if a page doesn't respond. That's what we saw, right? Initially with a wrong URL. Site contains will fail if a text is not found. Side that get and click will fail if an element is not clickable or visible or covered by something else. Okay. But in this case, we really want to add an assertion. So we're saying side get, and then we have to add an assertion. So an assertion in this case will be that should, right? And then an argument string exists. So these are chai assertions, and we just put them inside a should. Yep. Like okay. That. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the image, and we'll say should exist. Right. All right. Let's save it and see if it works. Okay, oh my so you... god! It's so easy. I can't believe like that blows my mind. How <laughs> having try having tried to do this in not Cyprus and failed miserably. This is just beautiful. Um, Jason, uh, I will take credit on behalf of the whole Cypress team, <laughs> right? We have to 35 people. Every time we see a happy human being using Cypress, it's like the best feeling for us. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Morgvani, there are built-in assertions for contains. Um, right. But not forget, like if I leave so, this off, will it? Let's let's try doing that. I don't yeah. remember if because you can have assertion get should not exist or should not be visible. In this case, yes, you're right. It has a built-in assertion. Oh yeah, that would work. Right. Oh, but we didn't click the button. You commented out clicking the button. Right. So. I wanted to see if it would fail if it didn't have the things. Right. Um. So then, if I add this, then this should pass. It does. Right. Um, so this is really just us being like extra super sure if we put that yes. in. Yes. A lot of times those divs, right, might exist, they're just hidden, right? And so they will pass. Okay. Right? So I think some frameworks, right? You, you're trying to check if model is there. Well, mm -hmm. get model will be there. It just it's invisible. So it's really nice to be able to say get should exist, get should be visible. And making an assertion in this case explicit helps you to make tests more readable and someone else will understand what's the meaning of that. Yeah. So, in, and I do like this because this to me feels like I can read this. It reads like yes. a human wrote this test. Um, and I like that. Right. Um, and, and this is also, I mean, like, if you think about this, what we just did is we wrote, we like wrote a note to our future selves. Like, okay. So when this page is like, if this page is working, you can load the page and navigate to about. Uh, you do that by visiting the index page. Then we can check to see if we're looking at the index page. We get this link and click it. Right. Then we check to make sure that we're on the about page. Then we click the button and then we should see a heading to and an image. Um, and, and like, obviously we're using top level selectors here because this is not a, a complex app. But like if we had, you know, if this was like character image, that makes, you know, and like this was mm -hmm. load character. These start to become much more descriptive. Yes. And in fact, we should probably do that so that they, you know, they do make sense. So let's give this a, a name of 
load or a class of load character because that seems like a reasonable thing to do. And then down here, we'll, we'll change that out as well to load character. Um, and then for these, we'll just do a name dot class list dot add uh, character name mm -hmm. and copy paste this down here. Okay. So then we should be able to, you know, these, these start to become much more descriptive as we right. go. And we can see like the character name and the character image are visible. And when you hover over character name, it shows us a name and cover over the image. It shows us the image. So it, it's, it's really, it feels like a note to future developers. Yeah. Uh, Jason, let's, let's make it uh, more surprising, right? You said on button click, we load a character. Uh -huh. Why don't we play with it? And we, instead of just load character, we'll add like little function that sets timeout and loads character like one second later. Okay. Right? Because that's an, like a common use case. Nothing is that fast in reality. So we will set a timeout and we'll load the character after, let's say, 2,500 milliseconds. So that'll be yes. slow enough. Is that right? Nope, that was not right. One more. That's right. There we go. Um, okay, so now we are gonna we're gonna simulate a really slow network request, like two and a half seconds to get this data right. back. Um, so let's save. It's waiting, waiting. Still worked. Ah, yes. Lovely. Built-in assertion Lovely. retries. In this case, what happened was you had that get command followed by assertion. Mm -hmm. And the command will retry getting that button until all assertions that are attached, and you can attach multiple, all pass, and then it completes and goes to the next command. So it's it's pretty sweet, I would say. It's really nice. Like it, it really is nice to use. Uh, there's a question about alerts. Can you detect if an alert is shown? Yes, yes. Just we have in our documentation alerts. You can stop, but by default they're stopped. Okay. So you will see like a alert message in the command log. Okay. Um, let's see, there's a few other questions here. How do you change the order in which tests run? Uh, is there a way to group them in test suites? Yes. Uh, so this is used as mocha on the hood. So you can set, have like describe suite and then inside individual it blocks and you can do different uh, nested blocks of tests. So if you search for describe, then you will see an example mm -hmm. in this documentation. But yeah. you can group them. You can have a hook that runs before each test or before all tests. And you can nest them full power of what you want to do. The only, the only thing that you, in our best practice guide is make each test independent of other tests. Don't rely on one test to run first. Leave some data there, and then the second test will continue. Yes. And then you won't be able to run just the second test when you debugging it. In in something that I think is really really important to keep in mind is like in in as a general software practice, creating tight dependencies like that is is usually a problem. But yes. the reason that people get frustrated with testing is when you do things where your test becomes its own application that you have to maintain yes. on top of the application you're maintaining. That's a problem. Like testing should make your application faster to build. If every time you make a change in your application, you also have to rewrite a bunch of tests, you've probably written, you've probably written complex testing that didn't need to be that complex. Like right. you, you want to simplify and just test like one thing at a, or like one workflow at a time instead of yes. like, you know, if you're, if you've got a user creation flow, that user creation flow shouldn't be related to the other things that are done by a logged in user. That logged in user should be stubbed so that it always succeeds. Like that, exactly. you know, that sort of stuff so that you can rely on your, your app being, like each test should assume that everything other than what you're testing went properly. <laughs> right. And I think you said it before, right? It's nice when you test not implementation details, but the outside, in, in this case, so we, we didn't look how our site was implemented. We never had to hook into this. We literally can rewrite the whole site now using any technology because we're only interacting with DOM UI, right, that the user sees. So the test should be more maintainable this way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Um, so there are a few more questions in here, uh, and these are all good ones. So let's see. So uh, Eric asks, can we put a time limit? So we can just, there's a setting if we want to change how long we wait, right? Yes, it, it could be global or it uh -huh. could be per each command. So inside side.get, uh, let's say you can, uh, like let's say on line 13, mm -hmm. we can say inside will give a second argument, which is an object, and we can say timeout and then time out of like 1,000 milliseconds, it's in milliseconds, so yeah. So let's so in do this that. Case, it will only retry, oh, see, it yeah. failed because one second passed and... Yep, so that's, so I mean, that's, vary, yeah. yeah, but if we needed it to be like super long, like 10 seconds, because we know oh, that our API yes. is slow, then we could, we could always do something like that. You can um, set it up to be, you know, one billion years, and if you hope that test passes after that, like. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's see what else. Is it possible to test if an alert is shown in the pipeline when deploying? Um. I mean, we we're kind of doing that when we run the Cypress run, right? Like where we are. We, this is run in the pipeline. So if anything goes wrong, we would just fail our test. Exactly. Yes. Um. But but. Maybe something to point out that might be important here is that Cypress is testing the site. Cypress is not testing the build pipeline. So yeah. you're you're not using Cypress to like listen to your running build and say like, oh, the build like exceeded this many kilobytes or something. That would be a different, that's a different thing. Like Cypress is for the, the built website that's actually like created and, and usable. Right. Um, Let's see, there's a couple other good questions in here. I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. Um, is this channel wait, wait. about testing with JavaScript? <laughs> this channel is about lots of things. Today it's about testing with JavaScript. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, th there's a question about uh, sci.get within, which I don't know anything about that. So maybe that would be a fun one to play with. Uh Yes, it's a little bit uh, sidetracking the Netlify, uh, I think, like, but I'll quickly tell what it is. So right now, when you did site get, site contains, it started looking through the whole like body of a page, mm -hmm. right? So it can see everything. But imagine you have a complex page and a form inside, and you want to fill a like, bunch of fields in that form. You can say site get form dot within, and now all your commands will be scoped to that form. So you can quickly oh. fill all the fields there. So it kind of changes like where the, like the root of, of your command starts. So you can concentrate on a part of a page and just quickly work with that page. So, okay. So to, to rephrase that in a way that makes sense to me, um, when we run document.createElement, we are attaching to the entire HTML document. Yes. But when I am in name, if I, or if I did like, a, we've got this container, if I run container dot query selector, I'm only searching inside of this particular DOM node. So what you're doing is the same thing. The the within yes. is just scoping it to one DOM node that we we only look inside of that. Yeah, Let, let's try that because you have loaded data container. I do. So we can in our test, right? We can uh, where are those assertions for the Morty image, right? So we yes. So right above, like yeah. So let's say I get that uh, loader container. Was it loaded data? Loaded uh, data. Loaded data, right? And so, and then we say within. Okay. And do I just look straight up, that's it? Yes, and then like, uh, it's a, it takes, no, it takes a callback. And so inside that callback, you wanna move your- Oh, I get it. Things. But, but now those selectors don't have to be unique on a page, they just have to be unique right. within that container. So let's test that. I'm going to do uh, an H2 out here as well. And, uh, yeah, and an imp. Yeah, I don't see. OK. And so then what I'm going to do to make sure, um, let's, let's also add one on the H2. Or actually, I can chain these, right? So I can say, I, like, it should exist, but I want it to not contain is it like that? Uh, uh, no, just say and instead of not contain. Say and and so and is Alice to should and then uh, arguments. Um, 
that's a call, and when a string not contain not dot contain. So everything that you tried, right? We just concatenate in one string because it has to. Yeah. And then give yeah one. Okay. So what I want to check is we're we're getting a generic H two. So I, why, what I want to see come through in Cypress is that we're only matching once because there's yes. only one H2 inside of this loaded data. And I want to make sure that it's not matching the outer text right. um, of, of this one here. So let's Hold save this. I need to start the Cypress opening again. Okay. Um, is there any way to test set interval or set timeout? Yeah, we, that's actually what we're doing with this, uh, this about.html. Is I, we, I'll tell you even more. You you can stop those. We have site clock that overrides those, so you can control time. So oh. you don't have to wait for two seconds. You can fast forward for two seconds or whatever. Like say site that's clock, site cool. tick. It makes the test faster, I would say. Yeah, that's really nice. There we go. And and okay, we made sure so, that we only match the one H2. So it's it's within our loaded data, and we get the, the H2. So yeah, there we yeah. go. That's that's handy. Okay. So then I think the next thing that we want to do, um, just to make sure that we don't run out of time here, is how do we get this up on the internet? Uh, well, we 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 mail it by snail mail, I think. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so a, a quick question here: Do we need to? I imagine we probably want to avoid, like, ignore yes. the videos and stuff like that. Yes. So if you could ignore them, that would be perfect. Okay, so let me ignore Cypress uh, screenshots. screenshots and Cypress videos. Yes. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to just add everything else. I think and let's so, make yes. sure that we only got what we wanted. Okay, I'm happy with that. And we can push, set in the upstream, so I just have to type git push in the future. Um, and then I want to, we can just deploy this to Netlify, right? Well, hopefully, but in order, of, like, we will deploy to Netlify. Let's let's try it. Let's okay. try it out. So I'm going to create a Netlify site. Uh, this is using the the Netlify CLI, so I'm going to create and configure a new one. Um, we're going to put it on my, my team, and we'll call this Cypress testing. All right, uh, and our our build command there is none, so I'm just going to say no build command. And our directory to deploy is public. You know, I have to say I never use Netlify CLI like this to like connect the site. I always use like the web application UI, mm -hmm. and I do use Netlify like locally, right? To test yeah, it. it's really cool to watch you. Uh, the, that init command it, like. Especially for me, where I'm I'm building a bunch of little demos and stuff all the time, it saves me so much time not having to you know go to the yeah. website, click the buttons. I just get to you know create my Git repo, hit that init, and it auto configures all that stuff for me. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So let's uh, let's scroll down. Does it support TypeScript? Yes, it absolutely does support TypeScript. That's how we're getting the um the references up yeah. here. I'll, this I'll tell is all you even more. We we shipped the TypeScript definitions for every command long, for a long time. We now actually ship TS Node. So if you if you write your type your specs using TypeScript, it should just work by default, right? Like it has it will be built in, mm -hmm. or is built in. Okay, so there's our there's our site. It's it's up and running, um, but it didn't like. Our test didn't run or anything. We, right. Nothing. Well, nothing happened. Nothing. Right. So we need to bring Netlify plugin Cypress. So okay. Netlify has the concept of build plugins, right, Jason? Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is enabled on your account, right? If I understand correctly. So yeah, I'm. I just clicked. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. let me go back and talk through this. So I am on my my Cypress testing. There's this build plugins beta link up here. So I'm going to click this. And then I'm going to click Enable Sites, and I'm going to choose the site that I want to enable here. So I'm going to enable Cypress Testing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to, uh, we already know which one we want, so I'm just going to save that. 
And then I'm going to go back to my site. And nothing really has changed yet. So we need to make nothing. a couple changes locally. Uh, the first of which is I'm going to create a Netlify.toml. And we don't need much in here, but um, we're going to specify a plugin, right? Um, right. So the package is, what is it? Netlify plugin Cypress? Netlify plugin Cypress, yes. OK. Do I need any other config? Uh, I believe no, but you have to install it using NPM. You have to add it as a dev dependency, because you have to. OK, Netlify. Plugin Cypress? Yes. OK, I have my fingers crossed, you know? <laughs> Me too, fingers and toes. Um, all right, so now I know for sure that one thing is going to break. Because we, in our tests, we're looking for like public index, which isn't actually what's going to be live. What will be live, because uh, this public site is going to get um, right, right, right. So what I think we should do, instead of this folder, just say a slash, right? So instead of public slash index okay. HTML, yeah. And then, uh, remo like, just remove index HTML, so. Oh, like a, like just a slash? Just Got a it. slash. OK. Um, and then I also need to fix in here, because the way that I set these up is not. Um, Let's set this up to be like the root, and then we'll set this one up to be mm -hmm. slash about. OK. Um, that should be all good. I mean, that that probably would have worked anyways, but you know, let's make it into an actual website. Uh, it, it's always tricky, right? Like going from static size to actually serving them from using HTTP server. Yeah. So and, and that's actually something that I, I'm curious about. If I want to, so like I noticed that Cypress is is starting a local host when it's doing these tests. Can I yes. tell it to use the public folder locally so that I can run these tests locally and in CI? Uh, no, but you can install any HTTP server and okay. start it, right? So okay. sort of a public folder. OK, in well, let's, case, let's do this part first. See, yeah. And then we'll we'll get it fixed. So let's um, let's get add all. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why, why did everything? Was oh, because deleted? we changed. Um, oh, it was just changes. OK, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to git add all, and then we'll git commit um, add Cypress to Netlify build. And then we'll push. And okay, while we're. So let's see. Let's look at. Really hope we. Have a successful build. Um, cell ninety two for screenshot testing. You can combine Cypress with a tool called Appla Tools, um, which I have a a I plug in Visual Diff. Um, where did I put it? Here, uh, and if you install this plugin, it will set up Cypress and run Apple Tools. And Apple Tools gives you a comparison of like, this is what the site used to look like. This is what it looks like now. Um, are you sure that's what you meant to do? <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see here. Hey, there we go. Look, our our tests Ooh, are running. So here's, yeah. Here's uh here's the build running. We've got our our Cypress stuff is is installed. We're running the the build plugins here, and we can see Netlify pl plugin Cypress runs Cypress four six zero, and it uses Electron, and we get our test passing. So everything worked the way we expected. That's super awesome, um, and it didn't take any like magic from us, right? We just had to just had to. This like, is the interesting thing, right? Like where, like how did it know what to test, right? Like which URL to load? This is a plugin into Netlify build system. The Netlify build system knows what it's doing. It knows the build command. It knows the source files. Mm -hmm. So then it calls our plugin because we have registered on post build hook. And into 
on post build hook, Netlify build system says, here's the build directory, mm -hmm. right? Public. And so on our plugin spins a HTTP server, serves with folder, sets the base URL in Cypress, runs with S, shuts down, shuts down the HTTP server and says to Netlify build system, everything is good, no errors. And yeah. Continue. That's it. Yeah. That is, uh, I mean, this is like, really, really powerful stuff, right? Because what, what we've done is we've taken something that like, if you were trying to load puppeteer or, um, what's the, what's the other one that, uh, I always forget the name of playwright, uh, selenium, web drive, selenium. That was the one I was thinking of, but I, I remember like when you would try to load up selenium, like you just hit these weird issues where it was like every fifth try, it would just not work. And you didn't know why. And if you just restarted it, it would work. And you were like, what? what happened? Like, how, how is that a thing? And so what I, what I like about Cypress is that it's clear that the thing you were focusing on was making it understandable for developers. Um, because you know, the error messages are clear. The, the workflow yeah. is clear. You're writing in borderline human language. Like it's, it's, it's a much, it's a much more approachable experience than, than others I've had when trying to write these types of end to end testing. And, and the fact that it just works when you put it into, into CI like this is, is just, it's really, really nice. Um, Thank you. Thank so you. let's, let's try to answer a couple more questions. We've only got a few minutes left, so I might not get to them all. Uh, can Cypress get any JavaScript errors that may be happening in the browser console during test execution? Uh, it will fail the test if you have an exception, like actual error throwing that you're not catching in your application, right? By default, you can set like a, a callback and ignore those if you want. But by default, any error that happens on your site will stop the test because you don't want you know, broken sites to be deployed. Mm -hmm. and, and are um, we able to say something like, I expect the site to throw a console error? You can, yes. So you can say callback, inspect the error message, and then say, fail the test. Oh, like, no, this is fine. I expected this to happen. Okay. So you can do that. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, and so then the follow-up question is, is Cypress able to get application server issues? The answer to that is no, right? Because it's just a, no. it's just a website. It's just a website. It has no idea who is serving the page. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess if, if the, if the server was returning headers, you could read the headers out of the request because it's just JavaScript, but that seems like, yeah, maybe don't do that. <laughs> it, probably it's not a good idea. At that point, it's like, what do you do, right? Like, should the test ignore some errors, right? Mm -hmm. It's probably the wrong place. Yeah. Um, is there a recorder tool for quick test recording right in the browser? Um, I think that's what, that's what it's doing when you do run, right? It's going to make a video. I, I think that person meant, can you like, interact with your website inside Cypress in that iframe. And instead of like just, you know, select a playground, oh. instead of like say, get like record your interaction. And so it makes like a, a chunk of Cypress commands that you can copy paste in your spec file. So people have done it, right? There are recorders. I'm not happy with any of them mm. because it's easy to record your clicks and, and actions, right? But how do you record, oh, I expected this Morty to appear. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like that's, how do you mm -hmm. record your assertions? And that's what nobody solved. So I, I just say it's faster to write it using you know, your VS Code editor than trying to record it correctly. Yes. Um, question about whether the recording of this will be available. It absolutely will. Uh, this will be posted on learnwithjason.dev tomorrow. Uh, it will also be available on YouTube. So you can, uh, you can follow learnwithjason.dev, follow, uh, follow the YouTube. And you'll you'll definitely get that. Um, what is Cypress? You're gonna have to watch the 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 whole thing. We um, we've we've gone all the way through it. It's super fun. Um, let's see here. The aren't you over testing what should already be in the unit test? I don't have any unit tests. I don't intend to write any. Right. So I what I like about this, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Glad, but but what I what I feel about this is like this end to end test gets me 95% of what I was going to get with a unit test and it's easier to write. Probably easier. But the second thing, think about the user. You are testing your complete website and your complete stack. You're testing the way the user. If you have a unit test for that, like load character, mm -hmm. 
but then your HTML structure is wrong and it's not connecting the button to load character. What's good is what unit test. It doesn't mm -hmm. give you any confidence. I think in a real system, you're testing the whole thing. Yeah, in, in the way that I've always thought about it, I think I've heard like Ken C. Dodds talks about this as well, is, is like unit tests are, are a, they're a specialized kind of test. When you have something complicated, that's like yes. a function that needs to behave a certain way, a unit test makes sense. But for like right. general stuff, like I clicked a button or I'm like generating some HTML, unit tests make less sense because they're, they're not, they're not showing the whole, you know, as you just said, like it's you're, you're testing an isolated piece that could be completely broken, but still yes. pass the unit test. Exactly. Websites could be broken for so many reasons. The logic in your function probably is a significant percentage, but there's so many other factors and the users don't care what's why it's broken. They'll just say it's broken. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. So is, is there a demo for using fixtures and tests? I we don't have time for that today, unfortunately. I think that there's probably a whole bunch of, of additional fun stuff we could do in the future with mocks and fixtures and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but for today, is there anywhere that you would recommend someone goes if they want to learn more about that? I just posted the link. Go to our docs, our documentation. We invest 25% of our, all engineers' time in updating the docs. They're always up to date, and we hope you find it there. Okay, perfect. Um, we should be testing the site using a real API. I think you should you should use the real API when you can, um, because what you want is to you want to mimic the user's actual experience, not your like designed experience. Also, yeah. building and maintaining a mock API when you don't need to is a pain. It's a, it's another piece of the app that needs to be maintained and kept up to date. And if the you know the live API changes and you forget to update your mock API, now all your tests are useless. So exactly. I think that if you can rely on your live APIs, that's a good that's a good thing to do. Um, let's see what else here. We've got uh, <laughs> more people noticing your background. It's uh, it, it really is a good one. <laughs> um, can I use some dot config files to add a base URL like CI and dot end? Absolutely, you can. Yes. Um, that is what this. Cypress.json is for, right? Like I can set the base yes. URL here and, and that kind of stuff. And, and you can control it and read additional settings in plugins index file and change things. You can pass additional environment variables. So you can do, you can have different config files and just pass different file names mm -hmm. when you do Cypress run. So you can totally create different yeah. configs. And, and do check out, like, check out this plugins guide. Um, there's, there's a whole lot you can do. And like the Cypress docs are really good. So, so go check that link. Look at the getting started and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, can you step into tests one by one? I don't. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah. Do, do you mind doing npx Cypress open? Of course. Again. And now inside your spec file, right at the beginning or like after like a, couple, a visit. All right, let me start it here. Yeah. So like right after the visit, you can put side.pause. Oh, and okay. we have to change because we didn't set any base URL. Can you say, change visit to again like public slash index HTML? Okay, so check this out. Right, mm -hmm. you pause the test, and now see you can play it or no, no, on the right. There is like step to the next one. Uh, this one. See what? Yeah, that one. Yes, click it, and now you're going one by one. Beautiful Each command, and and the best thing, like this is the, the cool thing, because Cypress runs itself in the same environment, in the same browser window. Mm -hmm. When it pauses, right, and steps, it pauses the application as well, mm -hmm. because like you're running in the same event loop, so you can really understand the environment in your application because you paused it while the test. Like so, this is, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do real quick, just so that we can make this work, is I want to have a, um, I want to have a dev, we'll call it dev, and we'll say serve public. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to run npm run dev. And it opened in the wrong window, but we'll pull it over here. And now we can actually, like, use our site locally. Um, right. Okay, so... How can I get Cypress? Let's just make that work real quick. How can I get Cypress to, to use this? Go to Cypress uh, JSON file. Okay. 
and inside add base URL, base upper here yeah, URL. Okay. Uh, RL lowercase, so okay. camel case, yeah. And then uh, HTTP with local host 5000, I believe. And okay. site visit should be, again, just the slash. Okay, so let's go here. We'll go to just the slash. Yeah, so this will mimic what the Netlify ran completely. So right. Is... Now, how do I get it to run that dev command? Okay, so you can use two terminals, or I have a utility with JSON I know you know called start server and test. So you can do npm install start server and test. Start server, server and, and test. Yes. Oh, I should probably install that as a dev dependency. You're right. Okay. Perfect. And so once it finishes, then in package JSON, maybe add uh, another command saying like dev. Oh, oh, like local. I don't know what you. Yeah, let's. Yeah, we'll call this local test. And, right. or actually, let's do it this way. I like this format test local. And we'll do start server and test. Right. And, and now, first command is whatever script you want to start server with. So now, okay, it's uh, dev, right? Is so it just, just dev just like, and then test like dev, this? Yes. And then the, you want to wait for the port to respond. So in this case, 5000 because it's local host. So yes, space 5000. And okay. so what happens, it will run your npm run dev, wait for local host 5000 to respond, and then it will run npm test. And when everything is done, shut down everything. OK, so now you see, started the server, running Cypress run. When it's done, shut down. So I use this all the time. I use it to do like Cypress open, so I can open Cypress with a single command. Mm -hmm. and Beautiful. Okay, so now we've now we've got it running. We, um, we got it all. We got yeah, it all. and with that, unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, Gleb, thank you so much for joining us today. This was amazing. Uh, where should people go if they want to follow up with you online? Uh, Gleb.dev. Gleb.dev is my okay. shortest domain name. Yeah. So let's let's uh, we'll we'll share that. Um, chat. I know there were more questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to them. Please go go follow Gleb on Twitter as well. Um, and make sure that you uh, ask questions there. Um, go check out Cypress. Go check out uh, the the Cypress build plugin. If you want to learn more about the the build plugins, um, you can just search Netlify build plugins. It'll be the the first thing that that comes up here. Um, so definitely go check that out. Give them a try and let us know what you build. Gleb, thank you so so much. Um, also, thank, thank you, you to White Coat Captioning for providing the the live captions today. Um, thank you to Sanity, to Fauna, and to Netlify. Uh, we picked up a new sponsor today in Sanity, which I'm really excited about. They make the captioning possible. Um, still looking for sponsors, so if you know a company that is looking to make the web more accessible, uh, hit me up because this stuff is expensive. <laughs> uh, and with that, we are going to move to, uh, we're going to raid somebody. So Gleb, thank you very much. Chat, we will see you next time. Uh, later this week, we have... Um, or wait, what day is it? Today's Thursday. So we've got next Tuesday, we've got Jem Young, or next Monday on Memorial Day, right? It's a holiday. We thought it would be fun. Jem uh, Jem Young is going to come on and we're going to do Service Worker Science Lab. It's going to be a blast. I hope to see you there. Uh, please come out, join, hang out. We will see you next week. Thanks, y'all.